Thank you, thank you. And can you dim the lights, please? Someone dim the lights just a little bit so you can see. Okay. Um, Fiona introduced me that I have been in um, the business of environmental transformation for the past 30 years. At the age of 22, I set up a business that was working on environments. I'm the daughter of a great British inventor who I will talk to you about because it's something, the reason I am here. I lost my father to cancer 20 years ago this week. And um, he died for many, many, many reasons, which I'm going to explain and make you aware of the consequences of what happened to him, okay? So therefore, and then of these consequences, um, I personally, and I have Olga, who's met Olga? The wonderful Olga Tomic, who is running Rainbow Services. Um, myself and Olga and about 10 other people are developing a national network of healthy home and business consultants. And we have got the passion in our hearts to really get this message throughout the UK and set standards and communicate to get this into everyday life, you know, about awareness of the environment on our lives. Right, I've put this up, the KISS, because to me, one of the things we have to do is really simplify our lives. This KISS um, painting, in my office, I had it in every single office, I had it in the conference room, and I have it in my home, and it's really a reminder, a symbolic reminder to me to keep my life simple, to focus on what's healthy, what's beautiful. You know, how Fiona introduced, you know, to really keep the energy high. So that's just a little introduction there because I have to keep simple on here because I can get too excited sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you saw me jumping up and down yesterday. Okay, Fiona asked me to talk about, you know, are you working and living particularly sleeping in safe place. So how I've structured my presentation for you today is actually looking at energy and looking at our energy and how we're affected by energy. I, you experienced me. Who was here yesterday? Did you experience me jumping up and down? I am obnoxious. I've got so much energy. <laughs> and uh, people say, hey, Dawn, you know, where'd you get it from? <laughs> And just before I came on stage, I got my injection, my <laughs> alkaline injection. And yeah, anyway, I've got lots of energy. So I want to just share with you where it comes from. And um, just a little bit about that. I then want to talk to you about a very serious subject that we do not recognize here in the UK, which they do in Germany, uh, Scandinavia, and uh, Austria, about earth energies and geopathic stress. I then want to move on to look at electromagnetic fields and now how they affect our bodies. They've been mentioned many times over the past two days, which I'm really proud about. You know, other speakers really recognize this and um, I'm very excited. We've got so many people that are becoming aware of it. And then the, the last one, which I wasn't going to include, but then Olga says, Dawn, you make sure that you get atmospheric energy into that and I don't know many of you can you just put your hands up this comes back to the kiss principle who has got clutter in their lives whoa look at you I've got my hand up too yeah we really do need to look anyway atmospheric energy um oh Barbara Wren I want to take her home I really love her and one of the things she kept talking about is stagnation and, you know, you can actually have really stagnating environments that really are not inducive to good health. So I want to talk about that too. Okay, let's go for it. So my energy, where does it come from? I've brought this in because it was very important. A lot of the speakers have also said 
to look at yourself and your truth. And, um, and, I, and the other thing I got from you, a few of the speakers, was the negativity on business and industry. I've been a businesswoman for 30 years and we've got to get some positivity out there. And it, I do get excited about business. Only if business has got a purpose for the greater good of humanity. That's where I'm coming from. So my energy, the meaning of life in Dawn's book. <laughs> First of all, you've got to find your truth, your true purpose, why you're here. What is your destiny on this planet? So it's purpose. Then find your passion. Really look. Who are you? What are your core talents? Yeah. And it's usually what you're passionate about. Discover your unique talents. And then thirdly is pride. Really look at what, you, well, what are we doing? What are you doing? What are, is business doing? What are communities? What are charities doing for the greater good of humanity? Now, that is my, what wakes me up in the morning, you know, really having a purpose, a passion, and feeling proud. So I just want to start off with that because I think it's important. You know, what are we all doing here? It's very important. And then also, I just wanted to introduce you about my energy, where I've come from. Um, again, you know, we've got to look at business about having every business. We've got to educate to actually look at their purpose and what are they doing for the community and, you know, for humanity. And I'm very passionate about um, looking at trying to transform the performance of business from just black and white looking at assets to looking at the triple bottom line people, the planet, and profit will just flow. So that's so important. So I ran a commercial enterprise on environmental transformation, and that was called the Flow Creek Group. I then, uh, 2008, I started a social enterprise about community transformation. And, um, and that was my local town completely transforming that. And then now, where I'm at now, um, is actually spiritual enterprise. I think this is the future. And this is what I'm looking at doing, people transformation through this charity social uh, organization called the Yin Crowd, which, you know, at the next conference we'll share about. Hey, Fiona. Okay. So that's where, where I'm at. And my energy, where does it come from? I, am, I feel so blessed. Um, I'm a woman that's in love. Um, I won't go on too much of that, but I think love is the most important energy, most important resonance that we've got, you know, that we've got to actually share love. Mum, two amazing daughters. Uh, the Queen gave me an MBE for my uh, work on transforming environments um, when I was 34, which was great. I'm 55 this year, so, you know, it was many, many years ago. I got doctorates from four universities um, for social change that I've worked into in the community, but also business, you know, revolutionizing business. And then pioneer of the life of the nation. I was down here in Bristol. I'm sorry, I've talked about this yesterday, didn't I? So I'll be quiet about this. Is that okay? I'm sorry. Is it okay? <laughs> I don't want to, I've got to get onto the subject, haven't I? <laughs> but the secret millionaire. It was absolutely beautiful working here in Bristol. Um, I work with um, the Teenage Parents Project and she was about to close and she used the environmental transformation, which actually um, Olga and I studied together uh, with the Feng Shui Academy. Um, it, you know, the Eastern philosophies. We talked about a lot of Eastern philosophies, bringing them over here. I'm passionate about that. And Olga and I, um, you know, have been working with Feng Shui, but translating it into Western talk. Teenage parents, um, I launched World Feng Shui Day in 2010, and Dina brought up, I think, five of the teenagers to learn about environmental transformation with Feng Shui. And when I went there, before I, I gave them some money, but because they were about to close, they were all crying, and, you know, like they, that was it, it was all going to close. And those teenagers, 200 teenagers, needed help. So I gave them £100,000 to to stay alive for a year, that £100,000 has attracted a lot more energy. 
And uh, just two weeks ago, she got £350,000 from the lottery to take teenage parents across Bristol. 36 districts of Bristol. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> I get a bit emotional there. And it's amazing. And she's also got 100000 I think, from Lloyd's TSB for doing extra to, to get best practice. And I, Rosie, um, I spoke to Dina last night and I said, you know, Rosie from yesterday, I said, look, We've got to get this health creation into what you're doing to step best practice. So, you know, it's things like that, working together, using your energy to make a change. Wild Goose Cafe, I gave £125,000 um, to help buy a building to transform the lives of um, homeless. And then 125, the sex workers charity, I gave about 25000 to help them that had been rescued to do things like singing lessons, going horse riding, little little things that spark them. Um, anyway, let me move on. And then this was beautiful. Look at that legend of industry. Woo! That was uh, beautiful. So anyway, let's move on. I've got to get into this subject. All right. Um, got to get into this subject. Come on, Dorney. So my commercial enterprise was called uh, Flowcrete, and we're transforming environments uh, through the world at your feet. Um, my dad was a great British inventor, couldn't control him. You know, he was just amazing what he created. And I'll tell you a bit about, more about the products and things in a moment. That's how we developed it all across the world. I sold it in 2008, um, and, you know, it's actually creating livelihoods for about... 10,000 people and um, support and and all this transforming environments you know and the feng shui has been used within the offices throughout which is good and what we did we transformed environments in homes um, you know in businesses and public areas so uh, I'll tell you more about that in a moment energy energy let's move I'm just very passionate about children I do a lot of work with children like I said teenage parents but also getting involved with Young Enterprise. If any of you can inject all this health and well-being into the Young Enterprise Network in, in the UK, that would be great. And uh, yeah, anyway. Right, let's just now start to look at where all these passions and this energy comes from. And, you know, just have a look at you and your family and what you are contributing to the world. You know, I am so proud to be the daughter of this great British inventor, and I can't believe through my dad what he's developed, how, you know, just one family, you know, the Gibbons family have actually catalyzed so much change throughout the world with this transforming environment. Here he is, my beautiful dad. I drew a picture just before we came in of where my dad slept. And I'm sorry, but I think I might get upset when I actually show it to you. He's, I'm not very good at drawing, but... Um, it's quite hard, actually. I'm so proud of you, Fiona, what you're doing here with this conference. It's great. But this is my dad. And, um, you know, the other thing your energy comes from is your family. And, you know, my dad, our, our, um, our family motto here, written under our crest, is Nitor Dono Sapiro in uh, Latin. Rah! That means um, I strive till I overcome. My dad didn't overcome cancer. He died, you know. And um, anyway, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. It's not the right time to talk about it now. Okay. But what dad did, he revolutionized fl the flooring industry and really brought in healthy, sustainable flooring applications uh, to bring health and well-being to the world at our feet. You know, looking at working areas, living areas, and uh, public areas. And what he did was amazing, because in the, in the actual flooring industry, there were lots of back and knee problems with the, how it was laid. So he revolutionized it, developing all these flowing, self-leveling materials. I'm telling you this because of purpose. I was not in that business to make money. It was to make change. That's what we're about. Anything we do, it's how we can make lives better, yeah? Um, oh, the other thing was, of course, as soon as I lost my dad in 1993, why did he die? Why? The industry was riddled with toxins, you know, toxins in the en en environment, 
toxins in the products, a lot of volatile organic compounds, lots of additives that um, were really not, not healthy. And so it wasn't only carcinogenic, but also, you know, caused a lot of um, dermatitis as well. The industry, once you connect with cancer, oh, wow, you just meet so many other people that cancer has touched. I could not believe it. And the industry was riddled with a lot of cancer. So it was like, I strive till I overcome. I've got to get rid of VOCs and toxins, you know. And so that's what we did in the industry. We also looked at bacteria, you know, MRSI, E. coli. We put silver additives within the flooring. So anywhere that the flooring was laid in an environment, basically it killed uh, bugs, you know, <laughs> um, microbes on them. Um, on contact. And then the other thing we did was look at waste as well. Um, so it was very big on looking at waste. And we were one of the first companies in the UK to bring in um, underfloor heating, which is again saving lots of energy. Anyway, let's get on to the subject. Um, and this is talking about my father. Um, you know, I, I mentioned about the industry and toxins, but of course we're learning about the influence um, of so many things on be becoming diseased. Yeah, and um, of course I knew nothing of geopathic stress. Can I just ask who's actually um, heard of geopathic stress in the room? Whoa, that is so fantastic. I did a conference this morning with 50 people in, and I think there were just three people out of 50 that had, uh, knew about it. Anyway, earth energies. We've learned off Barbara earlier about um, how we um, are really electrical beings and the movement, you know, um, in our bodies, the cell connections, the neurons. You know, it's very important, um, the the flow of energy through our bodies. Now, the Earth actually is one big electromagnetic field. And this resonates at a certain frequency. Um, Olga, you have to get me right here. I think it's 7.85 hertz, right? Our body needs that to be nurtured. While we are asleep, the sleep is when we rejuvenate our body. So we must make sure that we are sleeping in a nurturing environment, okay? So earth energy, geopathic stress, just hold on. Um, oh, stay there, sorry. Geopathic stress can be caused because, um, well, first of all, um, you know, you can detect geopathic stress. Oh, can I just tell you about a gorgeous man in the audience? Fiona's dad. Amazing. Met him at lunchtime. What did he used to do? Survey homes for geopathic stress. He used to actually um, study. He had a clinic, didn't you? And assessing people, um, you know, that had been geopathically stressed and things like this. And so basically we're following your work, sir. And they're going to be doing that. And we want to monitor everybody that's got a disease or, and look at, you know, the effects of it. Okay. Anyway, why? Why? Why are our houses geopathically stressed? Well, um, it can be because there are major constructions close by. It can be that you've got a mi mining. I live in Cheshire, next door to Stoke-on-Trent, where all the mines, coal mining, Stoke-on-Trent and Staffordshire is riddled with, with this ease because of these mines. Um, nobody knows about this geopathic stress. Well, they will do. So, also underground streams, um, you know, that can cause. It's a distortion of the Earth's magnetic field and basically away from this 7.85 hertz. And therefore, it's not a nurturing environment for our bodies to sleep and rejuvenate, which is so important, okay? And um, there is, um, hold on. There are many books on it. There's just a simple one here. I've got, are you sleeping in a safe place? Uh, there's lots of research, Germany, uh, Scandinavia, Austria, 
architects and doctors recognize geopathic stress. So if they have a, a patient, a client, a patient coming along that's got disease, they always check you know, their, the homes or get them to check the homes to make sure they're sleeping in a nurturing environment. So, um, and also there's lots of research being done out in Germany. You know, 5,000 um, cases of cancer, it was like almost 100% we're actually sleeping on geopathic stressed um, area, which is it's, it's shocking. Now, you know, I, I want to actually connect and do more research and connect with architects and doctors in, in Germany to get the facts to bring over here. So uh, just one second, I want to move. Oh, no, 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 go back. Oh, sorry, just one second. Oh, I missed a slide. Sorry, I did. It doesn't matter. Anyway, my father. I'm sorry about my drawing. It's not uh, very good. But <laughs> um, what happened to me? Yeah, you know, my dad died in 1993. And um, within my business, I was introduced to Feng Shui in about 1998. I went out to study with Lian Tu in uh, Asia, in Malaysia. And then I found a beautiful guy called Robert Gray of the Feng Shui Academy and did a practitioner's course back in 1998 and did another one in <laughs> 2011, didn't I, with you, Olga? And I was in shock. When I did it back in 1998 and I found out about geopathic stress, of course, I went to look where my father slept. And where he slept, um, in the bed where he slept, he had two of the strongest lines I've ever actually um, measured. We measure it with, uh, with, with dowsing rods. Who dowses in here? Hands up, please, dowsing. Oh, right, about 30% of you. Fantastic. Um, so we find geopathic stress, like dowsing for water, we can find geopathic stress lines, or even ley lines, you know, uh, with dowsing rods. I recommend you all... You know, connect with the British Dowsing Society. You all can douse. You all have the natural ability to douse, which you will find that, you know, there's so many people even on looking at what, um, what supplements you need and what's good for your body, what you're allergic to. You can use dowsing, um, which I find, I think this skill for you would really uh, can transform your life. Hold on a minute. Use your intuition first. <laughs> You've got to get that gut feeling first before you start to douse. I thought you were going to shout at me then. <laughs> right, my father's bed. So what happened to him? He had two um, geopathic stress crossing lines actually right at his neck here. The cancer he had was called myeloma. And um, I was so shocked that like the, the cancer... Actually, the first vertebrae that went was in his neck here. So, you know, you could see that the geopathic stress actually had affected him. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the failing of the, the, the vertebrae, then, you know, he had to go in a wheelchair and such forth. But after I found that out, then, of course, all my family, friends, I was out there checking uh, everyone, everyone's... Um, places of sleeping so if you need help with geopathic stress we've got Olga here um, on your seats you've got details of a little bit more information on geopathic stress and also Olga's uh, contact details so Olga could come in and do a healthy home survey and you know check your house for geopathic stress okay sorry Olga stand up Olga She's beautiful. There she is. Say hello. Wave, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think it was underground streams. Oh, the other thing you can check out on your house, sometimes you can tell uh, about geopathic stress. Uh, usually where the cat, if you've got a cat, the cats love geopathic stress, and it's usually where the cat sleeps. Also, if you've got lots of ivy, ivy adores geopathic stress. And ants, if you've got any ant hills and things, or, you know, ants uh, in the house, 
just you, you can get warnings and also when we go and do assessments you usually find degradation of the actual building cracks in the building cracks in the paving you know it's just like stressed you've got a stressed house and you don't want to be stressed yourself so you don't want that environment to be stressing you you know okay you want it nurturing okay it can be healed um it can be healed, and um, but you need to bring in an expert to do that, you know, and that's done um, a few different ways. I won't go into it now uh, because it's a big complex subject. So, anything else I need to say about geopathic stress, Olga? No? Okay. So, the next one is uh, looking at electromagnetic energy. Um... And what I want to just touch on here is electricity, looking at electrical cabling in your property, um, looking at electrical appliances, and then, oh, I didn't do it, did I? I was going to get everybody to switch the mobile phone off completely, but I didn't do it. <laughs> I did it at a conference last week. I said, look, I don't want your phones on silent. I want them off. I do not want you radiating this room while, <laughs> while, we're, while we, you know, involved. And I actually think from now on, after experiencing this, I think it's something that we should do in the future, you know. No phones actually switched on while we're all together, um, which is important. So I want to talk about mobile phones. I'm not going to go big on masts, but... I do want to talk about mini masts, but maybe a lot of you have them in your home already, these little mini masts. <laughs> and I just want to talk about Wi-Fi a little bit too, okay? Now, um, what we're finding, um, we work with a beautiful organization called um, the Radiation Research Association. And uh, they've been going for 10 years because actually with all the the increase in all this electrical equipment, appliances, computers, mobile phones, etc. 3% of the population are now developing this EHS, which is electro hypersensitivity. And I've met quite a few people now that they they cannot even drive because of the, you know, sensitivity even from the energy and equipment in the cars. So it is getting quite serious out there. So, you know, we're working with them. We're also working with a wonderful organization called PowerWatch. So if you want to have a look at more information on this, PowerWatch UK are really the spokespeople. You know, they always react to any government uh, communication, anything in the press, um, and they basically are going to approve all our consultants to set clear standards of safety for all this electromagnetic um, energy. And so you, we can't get government backing because, of course, government will not, uh, <laughs> just like the pharmaceutical industry, the telecommunications industry, major, major funding with government. So they will, they will not... Um, actually communicate any standards on this. So basically, we've just got to do it ourselves and we've got to get it by public, um, public awareness, you know, of these issues. So, um, Power Watch. That's right, Power Watch. Okay. Right. Electrical cabling. I'll just tell you a few little things. Electrical cabling, one of the worst places for electrical cabling is the back of your bed. And whatever you do, do not have any um, you know, extension leads going underneath your bed. Um, so what we recommend is actually you pull the bed head, oh, if you have got cabling in. We measure the, um, we measure the, the uh, volts per meter of the electromagnetic field with this machine. And th these are made and available from EM Fields and PowerWatch, but all our consultants have these. And I would recommend a consultant rather than uh, doing it yourself, but because you might <laughs> frighten yourself. So cabling, pull the beds away. Also get rid of any, um, any sort of electrical appliances close to your bed, particularly, you know, like uh, 
radio alarms, any coffee making machines, anything like that. And whatever you do, do not use electric blankets. That, ah, oh, yeah, I know. That's another thing my dad did. He had electric blanket. Oh, so that, woo. But anyway, the cabling also, be careful of your bed. Um, wires, you know, and metal beds. Of course, with the, um, the vaults coming out of the wall, of course, conductive metal can actually, um, hello. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Turn it off and pull your bed. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. Do that. And just pull your bed away. Yeah. Oh, sorry a minute. Say again. Absolutely, yeah. Take it. Take the plug out. Turn it off. So put it on before, but then take it off, eh, Olga? Take the plug out. Yeah. Yeah, your wall mounted lights, that means you've got cabling in there. So, yeah. Yeah, but usually, you know, it's usually around about half a meter away from these cables. You're safe. It's okay. The, the other thing that we're finding are oh, the obsession in construction for these, um, what do you call them? These lights? The halogen, these lights in the ceilings in your living room. And then, of course, you've got a metal bed on the, on the, on the, on the top, on the floor, and of course they are coming up through, through the through the uh, floor. So uh, that's another thing, you know. You, you be careful of uh, the wiring structures in your house and things like that. So uh, so that's just a little bit about it. Um, okay, yeah, appliances. Um, again, <laughs> appliances, computers. Computers are a lot less, they emit a lot less uh, electromagnetic fields if you use them on battery. Um, do not use your, your computers on your lap plugged in. So always use them, you know, on a, on a, on a table um, and preferably unplugged, you know, to use it from the battery. Then you're not getting emissions, yeah? So that's very important. And I recently had a, a conference, we had a conference for about 40 people in our house and we had everybody sitting in a circle and we had a, a, a large screen TV in the room. And of course I was presenting, I was sitting next to this TV and I got this manic headache that I had to move to the back. And it just really affected me. I thought, I'm never going to set a conference up like that. And then I noticed someone that was almost just a meter away from the other side and she was holding her head too. So, you know, oh, Right, okay, all right, right, right. Time, we watch out. Okay, just being shouted at about time. So, you know, it, <laughs> televisions don't sit, like your mothers used to say, don't sit near to the television. And they were right. <laughs> you know, old wives' tales and mothers, you know, they knew best because of the, 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 the radiation, the electromagnetic fields that are coming from these. Um, so electrical appliances. And if you can do, I mean, hair dryers. Look at us girlies. We're constantly using hair dryers. We've got to try and stop using hair dryers because it's just there. We're just zapping ourselves all the time with electromagnetic fields. So, you know, we just need to be very conscious of what we're using, electrical equipment plugged in, okay? Um, oh, the other thing my dad, he had... I bought him an electric chair, you know, one of those, because for being comfortable, you know, it had electric cables in. Did I know anything about that then? No. Oh, I just, you just, you're just heartbroken when you look back, you know, when you've lost someone like that. So, though, you know, those, those chairs that have all those, whoa, whizzy, whizzy um, sort of mechanisms, be careful because they're full of electrical cables. So, if, you know, get them in position and pull the plug out. <laughs> Yeah, and the beds. There's loads of beds like that even now, aren't there? Yeah, go on. Yeah, if it's unplugged, it's basically the cable, and you got to unplug it. Yeah, yeah. Turned off. Yeah, you're okay. Yes. No, no, because the electric comes through the cable. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Mobile phones, masts, and mini-masts. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about mobile phones. Um, 
there is so much going on in the press about mobile phones, you know. Um, you know, the Times, mobile phone tumor risk in young children. There's been lots and lots of press out there. And, um, you know, the Radiation Research Trust, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to the doctor that we're working alongside with. And she's going into all schools. We want to look at looking at the health, health and safety environment in schools because look at our children. You know, oh, they're so susceptible to to the effects as they're growing of these of this is just so oh no and do you know what they use them as alarms they have them in the bed they sleep with them under their pillows it is oh it's it's just mm -mm -mm. No, I mean, we can, we'll be actually publishing lots of research and lots of guidance. We're actually doing a little book, aren't we, on all the different rooms, all the different appliances, what to do with mobile phones, best practice. So, but we're just developing at the moment. So what I want to warn you about is the mini masts that a lot of you may have in your house. Now, I don't know how many of you have these, but I did have them. Uh, a little mini mask, I'm going to tell you. It's basically one of those little, they call them decked phones. You have a little base unit, and then the phone lifts off, and you can walk around with it. So, um, I don't know how many's got them in the house. Um, yeah? Okay, well, I would actually suggest you, um, we, we, we can actually measure the, the radiation from those, and they are, they are bad. And they come, through, they come through the walls, and it's just... It's a cordless phone. Yeah, cordless phone, yeah. Get plug-in phones, yeah? Don't start wandering around. Give that person on the phone your presence, connection, and stand still. Be present. <laughs> Don't wander around. And do not have those phones in your house. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no, no, no. It's the actual base unit that's bad. It's the base unit that's bad that, you know, and Wi-Fi, um, again, please have a look. It's, um, we all recommend, there's a, just one second, let me just finish and then I'll have questions. It, Devolo, is it devolo.com, um, Olga? Devolo. It's, it's called the DLAN system. And basically what we're recommending is you just get your Wi-Fi switched off and get it hardwired or... The hard wiring might be completely out, which you're all going, oh, no, don't do that. Use these. Um, basically, the DLAN system is you plug it into the electrical network and all your um, IT goes around your electrical circuits. So basically, it's a network in your electrical surface. Oh, just, just, come and just finish, and then I'll, and then I'll, then I'll have questions. Um, so the Wi-Fi is very important to get switched off because that really does affect. I am very sensitive to that. I can tell it's on and I get headaches immediately with those. So um, now this is the lady that we're working with, Dr. Erica uh, Mallory Blythe, and she's getting into schools and doing a national campaign on schools. I've just got a few slides of hers um, coming up. You know, um, she, she comes and joins us every three months we get together. Oh, right, I'm hurrying up now. Um, but look, the World Health Organization um, classified radio frequencies of electromagnetic fields as possible carcinogenic to humans. So these are just a few slides of hers, which really scare, they really scare me. Mobile phones can give you a tumor court rules, you know. Uh, I haven't got the research papers with me, but we are going to get all these published. And, um, you know, 15-minute phone call, thermographic images, just, you know, that's on a grown-up. What's it doing to our children? We've got to get phone parks in schools and get schools to get phones turned off. We've got to start major campaigns to save our children. You know, phone mobile phone raises risk of brain cancer. It's so scary. Yeah. And then, you know, looking at electromagnetic fields, all the effects. It's just vast autism. You know, sperm counts. What do men do? Keep them down in near the testicles, you know. And then we've got so much infertility. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and there, there's research that the doctor's got that, you know, if it's exposure for so many minutes, the sperm speed or what it's... 
you know, they've got speed, but activity is just like pff, deadened. Anyway, um, so many things all to do with electromagnetic fields. Okay, I've, I've, I've got my time up slot, so I need to hurry. Sorry about rushing, but atmospheres, atmospheric energy is very important. Um, I, in my business, I had serious issues and losing money in 2004, and I started to use, um, you know, an, did an atmospheric survey, and basically detox the place, um, detox the environment all through. Clutter, what is clutter? Now, I'm talking atmospheres and environments here, but let's just take this one step further. You know, you've got to look at um, what you're doing on your computer, how you save files. Um, you've got to look at a complexity of your life. This KISS principle, this is all about KISS principle, detoxing. But the environment, you've got to look at what you're using environment, what products that you're using on the walls. Are there any toxins in there? Um, products that you're using to clean um, in the offices, you know, there was quite a lot of solvent in the um, in a lot of like the what photocopies, the the liquid paper, all sorts of pens, you know, those marker pens, all sorts of things that were contaminating the environment, and also, you know, people eating and leaving things around, molds and. Oh, it can be quite nasty sometimes in atmospheres, in environments that you, you know, you have to be very aware of. Um, and also, you know, if you are, any of you are running companies, detoxing the team. Um, I used to get in nutrition lists, you know, nay, no, this isn't getting rid of them, excuse me, you're smiling over there. No, this is, I used to get nutrition lists in to talk at our team briefings, things like that. And, you know, sharing best practice on life and living um, was really welcomed by my team. And um, so that was that important. Just a minute, let's just carry on. But environments, um, you know, it's basically when you leave here or you go back to work or back in your home, just grow some antennae <laughs> and just feel the environment, environment. Feng Shui is all about a sixth sense. It's like feeling, you know, and if you feel beautiful and you've got a wonderful life, then, you know, your environment does affect you. Smell, have you got fresh air? You know, um, what you see, the colours. I mean, we could have a whole session just on colour and how that colour affects us and our lives sound, beautiful people, beautiful music. And did we have somebody yesterday saying about negative people? Wasn't he? You know, if you've got a lot of negative people, just get them out of your life. They don't make you go, wah, you know, and bring your love. Get them out. Uh, touch. <laughs> we need lots of touch. I'm, I'm one of uh, an ambassador, a global hug ambassador. I think hugging. Can I actually see before we leave as well? I'm going to finish one minute. Can I see a few people hugging before we leave? Remember, we've got a love dance tonight, so let's start the love off and have a few hugs before we go. Uh, and healthy food tasting. Anyway, let's get Feng Shui. Detox, that was my detox consultant that I used. Oh, anyway, I need to, um, I just need to finish, really. Um, Fiona. Fiona mentioned about Abraham. Um, the, what's her name? Hicks. What's Abraham? Yes, that's right. Well, you know, she was involved in this, the secret. I couldn't believe it. When I sold my business and I went out on holiday at the airport, I picked up a copy of the secret. And, you know, it's detoxing your mind. Fill your mind with beautiful affirmations and thoughts. That's important too. So, uh, and really get clear. Right, I've got to go, I've got to go. I just want to share with you because I am a very excitable person. And yesterday, I don't know who, who's done wisdom cards while they've been here. Yeah, a few of you. Okay, well, those that haven't, have a go tomorrow. Yesterday's wisdom card for me was clarity. So I thought, hey, I better write down, you know, <laughs> who am I? There's clarity. And so, this is my clarity. Dawn Gibbons, who you have standing here before you, is make Britain a happy, healthy, loving and prosperous nation. You know, 
um, with the feng shui, with healthy environments, and also launch the yin crowd about your inner nature. This is all about people transformation to bring inner peace to individuals, organizations, and communities and inspire business communities and charities to work together in harmony for the benefit of the greater good of mankind. So I am going to say goodbye now and end on this slide because all you need is love. And we've got a love disco, a love dance tonight, haven't we, Fiona? And I'm going to say, I finished. Bye-bye. <laughs>